The Stephen A. Smith Show starts right now. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do every weekday over the airways of ESPN Radio and ESPN News, ESPN Radio on Sirius XM Channel 80 as well, along with ESPN Radio simulcast over the live national television airwaves of ESPN News. Number to call up as always is 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. The Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance, cars, homes, boats, motorcycles, RVs, and more at Progressive. Dot com. Time for Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts. It's not a good day today. We can slice it any way we want to, ladies and gentlemen. It's just not a good day today. Pick apart last night's NFL draft any way you choose. When it comes to the New York Giants, that's arguably the story of the draft. You can look at the Oakland Raiders and what John Gruden and Mike Mayock decided to do with their three first-round picks. There's no debate that the New York Jets had a safe pick and did a credible job in drafting Quentin Williams with the number three overall pick. You can look at Jonathan Allen being bypassed. You can look at Ed Oliver being bypassed. You can look at all of these things. But it, uh, you can give major, major props. And if you're in Pittsburgh, you're celebrating big time when you've got this kid out of Michigan. This kid, this kid Devin Bush, is something special. You can do all of those things. They moved up 10 spots in the draft, got the 10th overall pick to make sure they got their hands on this kid. You can look at all of that. You really, really can. And in looking at all of that, you can come to the conclusion, okay, that Pittsburgh, in the aftermath of Ryan Shazier, suffering miserably because you didn't have a linebacker that can go drop back in coverage, that can run sideline to sideline, that can make things happen. You can sit up there and say, they've now addressed that issue. Major, major props to them, all good. But the story is the New York Giants. And I don't even know where to begin. I don't know where to begin. Dave Gettleman has been in the NFL for many, many years. He was the man, the architect behind the Carolina Panthers, going to a 15-1 and record, getting to the Super Bowl before getting bum-rushed by Von Miller and the Denver Broncos. When he was hired to be the GM of the New York Giants. We looked at his resume and we said, hey, the man is associated with football. He is, no, he does know football. He has a relationship with the Maras and Mr. Tish. He's been around for quite some time. He's a credible N NFL executive, we understand. My personal opinion is that somebody like Lewis Riddick, our very own Lewis Riddick right here at ESPN should have been the pick rather than an old school dude like Gettleman who doesn't mind leaning, leaning on old friends like Pat Shermer, who had a 10-23 and 23 head coach record before he ever got introduced as a head coach for the New York Giants. But that was me. Nevertheless, we understand that the Giants went in a different direction. You give Dave Gettleman this job. Dave Gettleman, knowing Eli Manning is fading, he's getting older, they missed the playoffs several years I mean, right now it's at six in the last seven years, but I'm talking about prior to this last season. Despite the regression that you saw from Eli Manning, you said, hey, Dave Gettleman, we can trust him a little bit. We can give him an opportunity to show us the way. We can give Dave Gettleman an opportunity to show us that he knows what the hell he's doing. And because he's been around long enough and he's stoic enough, and he's disciplined enough, and he's competent enough. Personal feelings and affection are not going to get in the way, and he's going to do what's right for the New York Giants franchise. Even when he drafted Saquon Barkley, instead of drafting the quarterback at Sam Donald, we weren't sweating it because Saquon Barkley's the real deal. He's an electrifying talent. The Giants were still going to stink. 
As a result, you're going to have an opportunity to get a quarterback in next year's draft as opposed to last year's draft. We sat up here and we came with all of these, all of these excuses, all of this rationale. And then last night arrived, Nashville, Tennessee. And we've got to ask ourselves this question as we sit up here today. A couple of questions we should ask. Is Dave Gettleman old and beyond his prop? Should he be immediately drug tested? Or has Dave Gettleman gotten so soft on us that he does not deserve to be an executive in the National Football League because his feelings have camouflaged or stained his judgment? What else do you want me to say when you draft some dude named Daniel Jones out of Duke? Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Jones threw it for over 400 yards in the last game we saw him. Uh, it was against Temple. Had a decent game against Pittsburgh. Had a decent game against North Carolina. I believe somebody showed me a stat where he once threw nine interceptions. I'm looking at my producer, John. Hey, correct me if I'm wrong. He once threw nine interceptions in one game against Virginia. I think something along those lines. I mean, you're talking about an individual that threw 52 touchdowns in his career that was picked over a dude in Dwayne Haskins that threw 50 touchdowns in one damn season. One season. Daniel Jones. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. You cannot make it up. And I got to tell you something right now. To sit up there and to see, I got a lot of questions about the New York Giants. Let me just throw some stats at y'all. Because when I'm looking at Daniel Jones, some highlights, somebody, somebody sent this to me. Some highlights from Daniel Jones' college career. Lost 58-7 to to Wake Forest in his final regular season game. Threw two touchdowns and nine interceptions versus Virginia. Threw one interception and zero touchdowns with a QB rating of 19 during a loss to a, a Baylor squad and was the 81st ranked quarterback in the country in yards per attempt. I guess they're talking about career numbers. Now I got to tell you something. What possible excuse can you have for passing up on Dwayne Haskins? New Jersey native, even though he ultimately grew up in Maryland a few years later, Went to Ohio State, threw for 50 touchdowns and just eight interceptions. Played in the Big Ten. Was, a, was a, 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 a top three candidate for the Heisman Trophy Award. Just look at the comparisons. Look at the comparisons. Why? Because Daniel, Daniel Jones had more games. That's more evidence to show you he doesn't deserve to be picked sixth overall. I mean, you can't make this up. This dude, Daniel Jones, why? Because his coach was, was Mr. Cutcliffe, who works out with the, who works the Mannings out, Eli and Peyton. Or some people say, he looks like Eli. Well, what do you mean he looks like Eli? What does that mean exactly? Oh, he's just as tall. He's just asleep. The hair, the, 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 the hair dude looks a little bit similar. That's what they were telling me. And by the way, at this particular moment in time, who the hell wants to look like Eli Manning? No disrespect. I like Eli. Eli's a consummate professional. Let me tell y'all something right now. You got a radio interview to do, you want Eli Manning as your quarterback. He's going to show up on time. He don't need no PR. He don't need no publicist. He don't need no age. He don't need anybody to call. Eli Manning will call you himself. He'll call ahead of time. He got a 4 o'clock interview. He's calling you at 358. It's touching. Did I say it's touching? It's very, very touching. Consummate professional. Class personified. A gentleman extraordinaire. Archie and his lovely wife, him and Peyton and Cooper. Let's not forget Cooper. They're lovely parents. They're phenomenal. I mean, when you talk about sitting at somebody's dinner table and being treated like a wonderful human being, and being associated and connected with somebody that is class personified. You want to have dinner with the Mannings because they're great. 
And it doesn't hurt that two of their sons have brought home four Super Bowls. But Eli Manning has missed the playoffs six times in the last seven years. Eli Manning has been a shell of himself. That same Eli Manning has gone down at the sight of a rush. He hasn't even been hit when he's gone down sometimes. He is clearly not the quarterback that he used to be. And when you look at all of that and you turn around and you pick somebody that's supposedly his clone that doesn't have the credentials that a Dwayne Haskins has, and when you have Gettleman talking about he talked to Eli, and when you hear that Eli is 38, approaching the last year of his contract, and wants to play, wants to play beyond this upcoming season, which is going to be his last, it's almost as if Gettleman made this decision so he doesn't have to get rid of Eli. That Eli gets to leave when he wants to, and in, in, in line, in the background, is Daniel Jones waiting. It's a catastrophically bad situation that Gettleman himself just exacerbated beyond comprehension. And as a result, we sit here right now, and I'm here to tell you something. This is not good. This is not good. This is some embarrassing stuff that just happened with the New York Giants. Daniel Jones out of Duke. Daniel Jones. It's embarrassing. That's just one thing now. 888, say ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. We could get into a lot of this stuff as the show progresses today, but I have no doubt I'm certainly going to hand off. I can't wait to have my man Chris Candy on the show. 30 minutes past the hour. And I can't wait to get to your calls as Giants fans, as NFL fans, with what has transpired here. Now, some things were predictable. Nick Bosa going number two to San Francisco out of Ohio State. We knew that was coming. Quinnen Williams out of Alabama, defensive tackle extraordinaire. Even though some people may have some questions about him, there's nothing in his career that say they're legitimate questions. I think the Jets made a safe pick there with Leonard Williams and the rest of the crew. Jamal Adams and C.J. Mosley and those boys, I got news for you. I got a lot of faith in the New York Jets defense for this upcoming season. This kid, Devin White, out of LSU, is considered the real deal. I met him. He came on the television show First Take, my television show on ESPN, every weekday from 10 a.m. to noon, Eastern Standard Time, with Max Kellerman and Molly Karam. This brother, Devin White, is the real deal. Plus, he's a leader. He's a game changer. I had Derrick Brooks tell me, the former Tampa Bay Buccaneer that's a Hall of Famer, I had him tell me that this kid, Devin White, this man will be the face of this Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense for years to come. Ain't nobody questioning that pick. Josh Allen. Some thought that the Giants would grab him. I'm not going to go a quarterback. I'm going to go the route of Josh Allen, who was raved about and was considered a stud, who was an edge rusher and a man amongst boys, the guy out of Kentucky, 17 sacks, five forced fumbles, all of this stuff last year. That was the man the Giants were supposed to take if they weren't going to take a quarterback. And we said well, if they didn't take a quarterback because we were anticipating if they didn't take Dwayne Haskins at number six, they weren't going to take a quarterback at all. And then they went and did this. T.J. Hawkinson, tight end out of Iowa. Detroit grabbed him. No surprise there. Ed Oliver at nine at Buffalo. Some people thought he should have got taken higher than Josh Allen, but that's neither here nor there. He's a defensive tackle. Josh Allen is an edge rusher. We understand it. Ed Oliver can ball. He's coming out of Houston. Let's see what he does in Buffalo. That's what they needed. Safe pick. But then the pick of the draft, as far as I'm concerned, or at least it could be argued that it was the pick of the draft, was the Pittsburgh Steelers working out a deal with the Denver Broncos, moving up from 20th to 10th to, get, to grab this, this kid, Devin Bush, out of Michigan. Lord have mercy. Somebody to cover tight ends. 
Somebody to run sideline to sideline. Somebody who's a hitman. Somebody who's physical. Ladies and gentlemen, this dude is Ryan Shazier plus 20 pounds with the same amount of speed, if not a little bit more. I love it. It's beautiful. That's what I'm talking about here. Steelers stand up. Steelers stand up. You're going to lose Antonio Brown. You're going to lose Le'Veon Bell. You're going to sign Big Ben Roethlisberger to a two-year $68 million extension to add on a year, the last year that he added his contract. So he's going to be with us for the next three years. Juju Smith-Schuster's the number one option. Vance McDonald's still there as a tight end. No, you don't have Antonio Brown. But a legitimate argument could be it's possible that you might end up having a better team. Particularly if your defense is better and you're defending better and you're defending against the pass better and you're defending against the rush better and you're getting at the quarterback because guess what? Devin Bush can do that too. I love it. Because ladies and gentlemen, when I grew up loving the Steelers, as much as I loved Bradshaw and the ballet dancer turned wide receiver known as Lin Swan, and John Stallworth trying to prove himself and prove that he belonged and he should be considered on the same level as Lynn Swan and Franco Harris and Rocky Blyer and those boys. Let me tell you something right now. You fall in love with the Steelers because of the steel curtain. It's Mean Joe Green. It's L.C. Greenwood. It's Jack Lambert. It's Jack Ham. It's Mel Blunt. I'm talking about those brothers. Now, that was a long, long time ago for some of you younger whippersnappers out there. Might not know what I'm talking about, and that's fine. But I'm telling you right now, when the Steelers were the Steelers, it was because they had a menacing defense that everybody had to pay attention to. And I love the fact that they did this. It meant the world to me that they did this. Especially when you see that the Baltimore Ravens went Hollywood Got Marquise Hollywood Brown, wide receiver and speedster out of Oklahoma. They're saying he's the second coming of Deshaun Jackson, who went from Tampa last year and went to Philadelphia. So I love the fact that the Steelers went the defensive route because Baltimore ain't playing. Baltimore is not playing. So I look at it from that perspective. But one of the other big stories in the draft was the Oakland Raiders. John Gruden, Mike Mayock. And I just want to state for the record again, I loved, I watched Mike Mayock last night being interviewed by my buddy Rich Eisen, courtesy of his wonderful, lovely wife, who I've known for many, many years. And the great Rich Eisen, who did so much for this network here at ESPN before he went over to the NFL Network years ago. He and somebody else were interviewing Mike Mayock last night after the Raiders picked in the first round. Now, I have nothing, and I hope Mike Mayock is listening. I have nothing against Mike Mayock. I think that when Mike Mayock was on TV, being an NFL analyst for the NFL Network, he did an exceptional, exceptional job. My critique of him being the general manager for the Oakland Raiders was nothing against him personally. It just reminded me of privilege because... If that's the case, I, I got news for the bosses at ESPN. Can I apply for a job as president of basketball operations for the Knicks or the Lakers or somebody? I mean, evidently, I didn't know folks in the media could become NFL executives, which is what Mayock did, or NBA executives. I mean, what the hell with that? What about me? I still would turn down the job because I'm actually doing quite well here, and I don't know if you know, y'all could, you know, could take care of me the way ESPN takes care of me, but that's a different subject for another day. The point that I'm trying to make to you is I got a problem with an executive with no executive experience, a person with no executive experience becoming an executive, leapfrogging over a bunch of people to be a GM in the National Football League. That's it. It has nothing to do with Mayak. I would say the same thing about anybody else. But that's neither here nor there. I'm here to tell you right now, I'm in a minority. I actually think John Gruden and Mike Mayock did a good job yesterday. And if I saw Mike Mayock, I'd shake his hand and I'd congratulate him. Not just for the draft, but for getting the position. Because it ain't his fault that he's in a privileged position of being snatched off of television and being given the executive job. I can't knock him for that. I have nothing against Mr. Mayock for that. That's not his fault. I just want a fair and equitable process for everybody. 
But having said all of that, let's give the Raiders some props where it's due. Cleveland Farrell is somebody that Dabo Sweeney has raved about. I've spoken to Dabo Sweeney personally about this man. He raved about his ability, his motor, his leadership, his commitment to team, his work ethic, every single box that you need to check. Dabo Sweeney checked for me on this man this morning. Yes, he did. That Dabo Sweeney. You know the Dabo Sweeney that's won two of the last three national championships? You know the Dabo Sweeney, the head coach for the Clemson Tigers, who just agreed to a 10-year, $93 million extension, $9.3 million a year, same amount of money as Nick Saban is getting paid. And I'm here to tell you, he deserves every damn penny. If Nick Saban is getting paid $9.3 million, Dabo Sweeney deserves to get paid $9.3 million per year. Period. Clemson is an elite program. Dabo Sweeney himself, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not just talking about Dabo Sweeney, the coach. Dabo Sweeney, the personality, is box office. Tell me when college football is taking place. Tell me you don't want to listen to Dabo Sweeney talk. Now, we want Nick Saban to talk because we're wondering who the hell he's going to go off on. But we want to hear Dabo Sweeney talk because of some of the things he's going to say. BYOG, bring your own guts, baby. Bring your own guts. That's what he said. It's Dabo Sweeney we talk about here. Arguably the elite coach in the last four years, Dabo Sweeney has won as many national titles as Alabama. Alabama beat him, he beat them. Why shouldn't he get paid as much as Nick Saban? Why? And when we're thinking about the come up, when we're thinking about two years from now, five years from now, seven years from now, 10 years from now even, if we look at Nick Saban, as creme de la creme as he is, because Nick Saban is the man and a half, I got news for you. Dabo Sweeney ain't. Right now, Dabo Sweeney cannot be perceived as being lower than Nick Saban because he has done it and has done it repeatedly. There is nothing to question about Dabo Sweeney. Oh, by the way, he's been a man in college football playoffs since its inception. Four years, four times he's been there, just like Alabama. And he's won two national titles, just like Alabama. And he beat Alabama, just like Alabama beat him. That same Dabo Sweeney, and congratulations, my man, because he deserves it, had this to say about Cleveland Farrell, one of the most committed players and best leaders ever coached. I've ever coached. Character, smarts, humble, strong, tough, size, and athleticism. Relentless pursuit to be great. Awesome teammate. Dependable. Loves the grind. He's a flat-out winner. The Raiders got it right. He is a no-doubter. Will be incredible, incredibly productive for them. That is a quote right here from Dabo Sweeney. Good enough for me? Good enough for the rest of y'all. Good enough for me. Dabo Sweeney said, I'm going to listen. Now, he ain't exactly E.F. Hutton. Remember when Howard Cosell used to do E.F. Hutton in the 70s when he was doing Monday Night Football? Not E.F. Hutton, actually. Merrill Lynch, but I say E.F. Hutton. Howard Cosell used to do E.F. Hutton. I mean, uh, Merrill Lynch. Halftime highlights brought to you by Merrill Lynch. A breed apart. So I always remember that. Always remember that. Nevertheless, that is what they are. And the Raiders drafted him, as questionable as it may be, if he's what Dabo Sweeney says he is, I love it. Also, Josh Jacobs, running back, they needed that. I like it. I think Mayock and Gruden did a great job. Here's their only problem. Everything they do will be measured against them letting go of Khalil Mack. And in that case, that's Gruden because Mayock wasn't there yet. But that's it. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. We'll be continue talking more about this draft and the Giants in particular, particularly with my man Chris Canty, uh, one of the voices of 98.7 FM in New York City coming up. Stick around. Don't touch that dial. It's the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. That was Straight Talk Wireless. Nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. By the way, for all of your biggest achievements in life, mom has always unconditionally supported you every step of the way. So this Mother's Day, show her just how much you appreciate the love with 1-800-Flowers.com. 
Right now, when you get ahead of the Mother's Day rush, 1-800-Flowers will give you an exclusive 36 for 36 offer. That's 36 sorbet roses for just $36. That's only a dollar per rose. Don't put this stuff off. Order it today. To order 36 sorbet roses for $36, go to 1-800-Flowers.com, click the radio icon, and enter code Stephen A. That's 1-800-Flowers.com, code Stephen A. That's with a P-H, not a V. Hurry up! This fantastic offer ends today. With Vivid Seats app, it's easy to find awesome seats to any game, and all purchases are backed by their 100% guarantee. Go to the App Store or Google Play and download the app and enter promo code CHAMPS at checkout to get 10% off your first order. I can do more to lower my A1C. Because my body can still make its own insulin. And I 